Hey guys, uh, welcome to the last part of our Corona layer material tutorial. And in this part, we'll be making uh, some rusty metal, rusty painted metal material for our bucket. So let's get to it. Let's grab our bucket and uh, let's get another layer material. Uh, so uh, for the bucket, uh, the base layer is going to be some uh, simple old uh, metal. On top of that is going to be some paint, just some like uh, splattered paint, not really that anything like uh, if bucket would be painted itself. And on top of that, we will add some uh, some rust. So let's start. Uh, name our material bucket. Actually, let's wait first for the autosave. So this is bucket. And this is going to be bucket base metal. And now let's assign the material. And I'm going to grab a metal texture, which is going to be this one. This is how it looks. I have lowered the filtering. I'm going to put it into the fuse slot. Again, this is going to be metal material. That means the fuse itself is going to be very dark. It's not going to be perfectly clean metal. That's why we have some diffuse at all. Okay. Let's now use it also for the reflection color. Set reflection level, level, level all the way to one and increase the reflectivity by changing the level of the map and now let's set panel to something like five okay actually we now can in add some contrast to the reflection map itself let's get an out another output and this one will be for the reflection glossiness and i think i like it just the way it is. I'm not gonna tweak it much. Uh, in this case, it seems that uh, the default level of the of the glossiness maps map works just works just fine. So let's try to introduce a little bit of bump. This is way too much. So let's try like 0.2 maybe. Yep. Yeah. Okay, this is our metallic metallic layer. Maybe increase panel even further. So collapse this material, clean it up, put it here. And our first coat is gonna be the paint. So I'm gonna grab this, call it bucket paint. It's gonna be very shiny. Final for the paint will suffice uh, at the default value. I'm gonna increase reflection to something like 0 0.85, 0 0.9 even. I'm going to grab a mix map. The mix itself is going to be white and it is going to be slightly mixed with a with this metal texture, just slightly, so like 20%. Okay, that looks nice. And now we need some mask for the paint. So I'm gonna grab a bitmap, go here. I'm gonna use some grunge texture so you can see how it looks. Actually, it looks quite noisy, so let me just fix it real quick. I'm going to apply some noise reduction filter on it, so it's a little softer. Resave it as a rust mask, soft. Okay. That's better. And let's try to plug this as a mask. 
maybe increase the tiling. That looks nice. Decrease the blur. Actually, I'm gonna play with the tiling a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna make it maybe more contrasty. So So it looks like this. This is nice, maybe the telling is too stretched. This is more like it. Okay. Actually... This is better. Okay, so now we have bucket, that's uh, metal. And there's some paint on top of that. And we can actually try to use this as bump as well, so the paint has some thickness. So let's just use it as a bump map. All right, that looks good, maybe too strong. So just decrease it. Okay, so now our paint has some plasticity. It doesn't look so flat. And uh, now let's, let me disable the vertex channel real quick as you can see our bucket has has quite dense geometry and we are going to take advantage of that and we are going to drive our rust distribution by by uh, vertex paint so first let's let's create our rust layer so grab another material bucket rust and this is gonna be another layer. So just get it in there, find some nice rust texture, which is going to be, let's say this one right here. This is how the texture looks. Let's put it into diffuse, adjust the tiling. So in this case, This looks nice. Rust is quite rough and bumpy, so let's put it also in bump. Let's crank the bump up to two at the very least. Yep, that looks good. And let's make it just slightly reflective. So again, mix amount because rust is not really metal, so it doesn't reflect orange. Let's set it to Reflection color. Glossiness is going to be real low, like 0.2. Okay, it reflects at least something. All right, so now let's grab a vertex, vertex color and use it as our mask. So now it's empty. That means uh, white is, white is, let's see what the vertex color is. It's white actually. All right, so that means we have to invert this. Hmm, that's odd. Oh, right. We need to have some vertex color first. I forgot that no vertex color in 3ds Max uh, shows itself as as white, even though there's none. So let's add vertex paint. Now, if I put white here and disable this, there we go. All right. So now white is the white is where the rust is. Black is where the rust does is not. Actually, I want it inverted, so let's put invert back, enable it, there we go. Okay, so now, uh, white is where rust is not, and black will be where the rust is. So if I paint around here, perfect. We've got rust, but it looks kind of weird, as you can see. So what we are going to do is we are going to introduce some texture to the rust 
and to the rust mask and then we are going to clamp that texture so whenever we paint we get some nice like scratching and chipping in the rust but we do not get this kind of weird soft gradient so let's do that now uh, grab this set it as mix amount we are going to actually add this to the to our vertex color so let's get coronamix which is by default set to add so just put coronamix here as bottom put this here as top okay now i am going to boost the level no something is actually not right here i think i might need to either add it after the output or multiply it instead of adding let's see if that works no no i have to add it i have to add it okay so maybe we need to clamp it here let's see if that works Point thirty five. Yeah, this is what I wanted. Right, so now we can, you, by moving this horizontally, we can control the spread of the rust. Actually, the texture may be tiling too much, so let's also decrease the tiling. and tweak our fall off of the rust and this looks nice maybe introduce some contrast here so our the map we are adding has more contrast therefore we have more of the joint islands of the of the texture rather than just individual noise move it further okay this looks nice actually let's try to move it even further here we go okay so now if i paint the rust anywhere it's gonna show up but it's gonna show up as a broken texture not just a simple gradient so i'm gonna fill this with white set it to black i'm gonna disable the vertex channel display because we cannot see we cannot see our object through it our shading rather and i'm going to start uh, painting the rest so i want it here here around the bottom and now once it's painted i can go back and dial in the spread of the rust okay maybe this is too much so i'm gonna soften it up a little there we go again take black smaller brush just add some little rust over here at the top again maybe just some random rust here again this is too much so i can dial down the spread of the rust as you can see here and i can just basically paint it wherever I want it to be so for example here a few strokes I can blur it overall to make rust more more random and more even I'm gonna do just a few more strokes maybe some bigger ones here 
and here a few near the top that may be too much so again let's switch to white decrease the brush size and let's break it apart here okay and I think this is it so this is how you can control the, uh, the distribution through vertex color and once I get out back to our scene everything looks nice maybe the white color wasn't really the great idea for the bucket so maybe let's make it like bright gray so let's go to our mix okay that's better all right and now i'm gonna just try to actually enable the field to get slightly focus it's there but it's not very obvious i'm afraid uh, actually i think i have camera modifier yeah f stub here should be two as well let's try two point a as this may be too too blurry all right our focus is set here so that's perfect maybe maybe just slightly more on the lamp like this okay so we have now all the materials ready so i'm just going to set the final resolution and i'm going to let it render and uh, stop the video here and once it's done rendering i'm going to uh, put it through uh, photoshop just a few few post processing steps and once it's once it's done uh, i'm gonna return and i'm gonna show you how the final result looks all right so here we are with the final result uh, as you can see everything looks nice so over the course of uh, the past hour we managed to create uh, four complex layered materials namely our uh, table material or the wood uh, we can see all the scratches all the dirt in the corners all the different reflective flares uh, up here on the on the top uh, we can see also our nice worn polished metal material our bottle material looks nice as well and so does our layered um, dirty or uh, rusty metal on a, on a bucket uh, so again uh, to wrap it up it's uh, quite easy to set up layered materials all you really need to do is identify all the different layers uh, you will be needing then create them as separate materials and then just prepare some masks to blend them and that should give you some nice and uh, not really not really slow results because uh, uh, the new layered material in uh, uh, corona 1.3 is actually quite optimized so uh, the performance hit won't be as as big uh, so i hope you found this tutorial useful and i'll see you next time goodbye